Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Writers Chat. And this is where writers like to gather together and talk about all things writing for writers and by writers. We're really, really glad you're with us today or watching the replay. My name is Jean Wise. I'm one of the co-hosts. I'm joined today by Melissa and Bethany. There are other two. Good, and we always have to take a moment to thank Melissa. She's our behind the scenes gal, and we told her to stay on the screen a little bit today. We would not be able to do most of what we do if it wasn't Melissa helping us behind the scenes. So we're really, really glad to see, have everybody with us. And we have a special, special guest with us today. We have Rhonda Dra Dragomir. Did I say that right, Rhonda? Yeah. And we all know Rhonda, those of us that most have been around here for a while in this community, and we love it, love it, love it when she teaches us. And she's an award-winning author including, I think, something fairly recent. Aren't you a finalist in the... The 2020 Genesis Contest, yes, in the historical romance. Ooh, got an echo. There you go. But yeah, so congratulations on that. I know that was just a recent announcement. And it has been so much fun. Ron and I met three years ago, four years ago, maybe? My very first serious writer event, I met Jane and Bethany. Yeah. at the Ohio Christian Writers Conference in 2017. Yeah, and it was just, it's been a delight. Bethany, don't you agree? It's been a delight to watch her grow and bloom as a writer. It's so much fun to just be part of people's journeys, like yeah. kind of seeing from the beginning and see how they're going and blossoming. Yeah. yeah. And she has been. So Rhonda, we're going to turn it over to you. You're going to talk about managing your image stream. You'll have to yes. tell us what that means first too, but. <laughs> <laughs> I am a, I am a teacher. So I have a definition of uh, you, what, what an image stream is. And I just want to review, this is part two really. And it's hard to understand part two, unless you remember part one, which was so memorable, right? Huh. But it is available on uh, the uh, YouTube channel for, for Writer's Chat. And if you're unfamiliar with that or didn't uh, see that, you're going to have to play a little catch up today. But this is part two. You know, writers, we communicate mostly through words. But in this day and time, um, when we are called on to do so much promotion, we also have to learn how to communicate with images. And for some people, that's just the boogeyman. You know, that is so scary. The thought of, of, of creating an image and how do I know what's a good image and, and what do I do with my images and oh, help, help, help. Well, I'm going to help you today because I am one of those rare birds that does both images and words and have I've done both professionally. So I'm going to share with you what I know. What I don't know could fill its own writer's chat <laughs> uh, video <laughs> what Rhonda does not know about images or what she's still learning about images, but I'm committed to being a lifelong learner. And yes. if you're in this business as a writer, you have to be a lifelong learner. You have to right. research, you have to learn what you don't know. First of all, you have to know what you don't know, and then you have to learn what you don't know, and then you have to apply what you never knew you could. And that's part of being a writer. And taking a risk a little bit and growing, don't you think? And taking exactly. that risk. Exactly. Hey, Before I got a I got a comment on the image right behind you. That giraffe is as cute as can be. Isn't that darling? That is from my best friend in North Carolina. She's got big blue glasses. And I just I just needed something there to to uh to be, be cheerful and that represents my brand. Part of my brand is humor. And uh so when this video appears, you will notice I have up Created my background so that I look a little more professional. And the big news for me is I'm getting my own office. I'm converting my guest room, which nobody ever uses, into an office, which I will use. Yay! That that takes no genius. That just takes some oomph. So, um, in our previous seminar, we talked about what what we need to do to develop a good image. What do you want to say? See, images say something. They don't just look. They communicate something. Then we talked about how you select a good image, what makes a good image, the lighting, the mood, the composition, the leading lines. You remember all of this. Um, the saturation, we talked about how in this day and age, our eye is tuned to images that are either very saturated or black and white, high contrast, mm -hmm. black and white, one or the other. 
But if you're in between in that kind of mush zone, you're not going to get any attention. We talked about, um, this was Cody Moorhead's strategy, about develop first image to develop is an Instagram story image. It is 9 by 16, meaning uh, that is the width versus the height of the image. Thinking about, remember, I taught you about the rule of threes that there should be three zones in a picture, top to bottom and left to right, that you can see because those are easier to use. And there's nothing more frustrating than working hard on an image and the background just eventually is not going to work. It just will not work. One of the things you can do, one of the measuring sticks you can hold up to know whether an image is gonna work it has to do with that rule of threes. So if you missed that lecture, I encourage you to go back and watch it. I told them before we started recording, I watched it like this, you know, not wanting to really see myself so much, but there's a lot of good information there. So we have our images, basically, and we're content with them for now. I'm very discontent with some images I created a long time ago, but I'm content with them for now. I'm ready to post. Now what? Now what? See, creating the image, believe it or not, is the easy part because now you've also got to create text to go along with that image, you have to know where to post it, when to post it, how to post it, right? That's what today's lesson is about. So we're going to talk about an image stream. You've got these images, you throw them in your image stream. And um, I, you know, people need to see your image. And when they do, it should stop their scrolling with just standout beauty and appeal. An image stream, and this is Rhonda's definition, because when I went into image screen definition, I got on some high tech website. I don't know what that was all about. But an image stream is a flow of images from your mind and your heart and your creative soul into the mind and heart and creative soul of another person. So I like I'm that. streaming my vision of what I want to say to you and to impact your vision. And hopefully we share the same stream. It's like a connection is made between you and me. Now I'm going to share my screen. It's be really hard to teach without images without sharing my screen. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, you need to make me a host, Melissa, because my screen sharing is disabled. But what I'd like to do is to show you uh, an Instagram image uh, stream. And there I am. All right. There, there's a picture from my brand. I'll give you just a moment to love that, right? This is a great image. It's Eileen Donan Castle in Scotland. It's uh, Castles and Scotland are both um, part of my brand. And I just love this picture. And I'll, I'll just talk for a second. You taught us last week. You can see everything you taught us. Yes. We're on before. Well, I'll talk about the lighting. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the focus of this image, the lighting is dramatic and beautiful. The composition, I, you know, it really would be a little better if the screen was moved a little more toward the left, the castle, but I just love this picture. And I, I leave pictures, by the way, I use images on my desktop uh, background to inspire me, right? And so, you know, if you write children's books, you know, there are ways of doing that. That's another whole lesson. Anyway, I'm going to share... Uh, and I, I will tell you just straight up, when I'm looking at Instagram here, um, one of the ways you can see what it looks like on a phone is by just bringing it down to this, this image that looks more like a phone. Because Instagram is basically a phone-centric app. It, it works best on the phone, it looks best on the phone, and we're looking at it on my desktop. But I'm just going to start scrolling. I've only got uh, Melissa and Jean, I'm going to let you unmute yourself. When you get to an image that captures your interest, holler stop. Here we go. Ooh, I love butterflies. <laughs> All right, it went by too fast. This captures your imagination. Why, Jane? I love butterflies. Okay, because it's a subject material that appeals to you. That's also, if you will look at it, a highly saturated image. Yeah. Okay, that's what made you stop. Okay, here we go again. We're scrolling. Holler it's stop. Great. That one. It's all donuts, but it went fast. Yeah, the one with the coffee. <laughs> the donut. All right, do you know why this appeals to Bethany? Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, donuts. Need we say more? 
No, this I is like the pink. <laughs> I was going to say, pink is one of Bethany's branded colors. Okay, so her eye is drawn to pink. That's actually a really cute pose. And, it, and it's a really cute sentiment, too. I own a lot of workout pants for someone who just eats all day, right? <laughs> yep. So, and she, this, this writer put her profile information right there in the image, all right? And yeah. the images you're seeing are friends of mine. We'll do this one more time. Holler, stop. Somebody. Oh, the yellow flowers. Flowers. Okay. Let's go back to the yellow flowers. Oh, it looked inviting. Flowers. Renee likes the journal. <coughs> I might have gone by. There we are. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the journal too. I think you whenever I see books and handwriting. Right. And this image appeals. It's first of all, it's got great lines. Look how highly saturated it is. See, and, and when I'm scrolling, how many of you go through your feed that fast? Yeah. Faster. <laughs> I, okay. Bethany, I'm not surprised you go faster than that. <laughs> but that but you've got literally seconds to get someone's attention. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it's crickets. You just don't hear anything. You don't get any likes. You don't get any posts. You have to capture their imagination. So I'm going to share with you um, my strategy right now. And I will tell you, folks, it is modestly successful. I am not tearing them up on social media. And if you think I am, I'm going to disabuse you of that right now. Some of what I do is pretty successful. Some, if, if I get a, a couple hundred likes, I'm in orbit, you know, and there are people who get thousands of likes on a picture and they're like, nah, I could do better. Well, I tell you what, for me, I, I'm just getting started. And um, I will say real quickly here, I used, um, excuse me, I received coaching from Victoria Dewerstark on, on social media, personalized coaching. And she does offer this, you know, it's fee-based, but it was worth every penny I spent to work with her on understanding social media strategy. And um, part of it is images. And that's what we're really going to focus in on today. So... The first thing I do, I have done, is to define my social media platform. What do the different, what are the use, uses of my different platforms, okay? So I will say here, I'm going to bring up some of my images real quick. Can you all see that? This is the image we created in our last workshop. And so here's, uh, this image, and here's the, the, remember, the different sized image. This image is sized for Instagram stories, and then we crop it, and voila, this is sized for your Instagram feed. But I'm going to talk to you about what, what my strategy is. First of all, I have a, let's talk about Facebook. I have a personal page on Facebook, and I have an author page. I think a lot of writers have done that. They have a personal page page and a writer page. My personal page has about, it has over 2,000 friends. Most of them are writers, honestly. And then my, my, um, my author page has just a few over 500 likes, okay, which again, I'm telling you folks, that is modest. It needs to be a lot bigger. But this is the type of post I put up on my Facebook personal page. This is from when I was in New York with a serious writer. And <laughs> It's humorous, right? See my husband, here he is yawning. Uh, we were at Phantom of the Opera. And uh, this is the kind of thing I put up on my Facebook personal page. It's personal. Pictures of my cat, pictures of my daughter who's expecting a baby in August, pictures of my house, pictures of things you know that are personal to me, my personal life. But when I go over to my Facebook author page, you're going to see a post more like this. This fits my brand. Uh, and, and Bethany has helped me some with understanding my brand. But here is a phrase in Gaelic. And here's the proverb, the proverb in Gaelic, the geese will tell it in autumn. Okay, now that might not make you stop. But if I see something in another language, I'm stopping. Okay, so and then I've got the text here. This is a Scots Gaelic proverb. 
And so whenever we're tempted to think no one will discover a dark deed, we should remember this wisdom. Okay, now I'm writing historical romance. My villain, Fenwick, learns this when a murder he's committed more than 20 years ago is revealed, leading to a cascade of consequences. Now, number one, that is well written. Okay, I can tell you straight up, I worked hard on that, but this fits my brand. This is on my author page on Facebook. Okay, and now this is more like a post that I would put on my Instagram. Okay, this is from my Instagram feed. Another part of my brand is medieval or the medieval ages. And I'm trying to entice, this is, this is a mistake I made. Don't make this mistake. When I started out, I started connecting with other writers. But guess, that's not my audience. Who's my audience? Readers. Readers, thank you, Jean. Okay, so I have tweaked my strategy, uh, especially with the images, to try to get more readers. And what type of readers do I want? Readers who are interested in history, readers who are interested in romance. So I'm taking my Instagram account that direction. So one of the things I think that enticed, um, got me invited to present this with you, I started a medieval quiz. Okay, so which word describes a foolish person? A, an autem, B, a bouse, C, a coxcomb, or D, a duck, you know? And does anybody know the right answer? I'll bet Melissa does. Actually, I didn't. <laughs> and you didn't. It's C. Coxcomb. A coxcomb. Somebody, somebody said it. A coxcomb yeah, is, is a person who is a foolish. And so I've got here, you know, if you lived in Shakespearean, and I give them a little bit of history, all right? That is supposed to attract likes. I will tell you, I put up a, 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 something about pieces of armor, and I had teenage boys commenting, you know, oh, I loved this. And I'm like, well, they're not exactly my demographic, but I'll take them, right? <laughs> so they were very interested in the armor. And they came in because of hashtags. I'm going to talk about that. So that's my Instagram uh, business. That, now, this is a pin on, on Pinterest. And I will tell you, I've only got Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. That's all I can do, folks. Some people are going to do a whole lot more. More power to you. But right now, I'm just trying to get some traction. And if I'm running too many races at once, I'm going to be exhausted. So this is a pin that I made. This is my brand. What is my brand? Part of my brand? Castles. Okay. I get a lot of traction, a lot of interest from my castle posts. This is actually... Bram Castle in Transylvania, Romania, which the name Dragomir, you may not know, is actually Dragomir, okay, over in Romania, where we traveled and adopted our daughter. And they're like, it's good Romanian name, right? So I'm like, okay, it's good Romanian name. It's actually the Dragomirs were from Transylvania, okay? So this is personal to me, but it's also my brand. A woman married to a dragomir must repost, and I reposted this, a Transylvanian castle, right? Okay. And then a little bit of personal information, but it fits my brand and it tells about me on Pinterest. It, now, it really Twitter. It created a mood, too, that picture. It did. Oh, it did. That's mood. That's fine. I have a feeling that's a Photoshopped image. And I will tell you, I took that in on my computer and I improved it. I improved the lighting and the contrast and did, did some things to it before I reposted it. Okay, but I did give, I did give credit, Castelli del Mondo is my favorite uh, source for castle photos. And so I did give them credit, even though I dolled it up a little. Then this is my Twitter. And, and Twitter, I tell you, um, I, my, my philosophy on Twitter is duck and go. Duck, controversial issues, <laughs> and go to Jesus. Okay, that's what I do on Twitter because it is such a wild west rodeo out there on Twitter. And so mostly what I do on Twitter is scripture. And it, honestly, I sometimes I have to let Twitter go. I just can't even go there because I have a real tender heart. And one of my spiritual gifts is mercy. And I just, I ache over, over some of the, um, the angst, the anger and so forth that's there on Twitter. So I'm putting up, now this fits my brand. One of my brands is, is something called the Orphan Heart. And uh, a lot of the, the uh, heroines in my uh, stories 
all have orphan hearts. And I'm going to define that through my social media because a lot of people don't know what that means. But a person with an orphan heart relates to God like a, an illegitimate child rather than a true son or daughter and has trouble receiving the love of God or believing that God will be there to help us in times of trouble. So this is my Twitter post for I'm the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. So the fatherhood of God is one of my themes and I can use that theme on Twitter in a really um, effective way to help my brand, but also appropriate as far as I'm concerned to this medium. You won't find me posting things about racism or political protests or political parties. I don't even retweet those, okay? So I have defined my brand. I've taken hold of it in a way that's comfortable for me. And if you're a person that, that, that uh, social justice is a part of your brand, go for it. Mm -hmm. The social justice is not a part of my brand. So I don't mess with that on well, Twitter. I just wanna encourage Rhonda, I've got to say, I really, really admire how you can verbalize your brand in line with each of the platforms that you decided to spend time with. That is a phenomenal social media strategy that you say, in Twitter, I'm going to do this and in this. I just applaud you for that and to model that for us. You know, I have brand things swirling in my head and I kind of know these buckets we've talked about before, but to define it for each brand is like you did. Wow. I have to Thank you. affirm that. That is just amazing. And I, I'm sharing I with you, not because I have an inordinate pride in what I've done. It's just, I'm, I'm regurgitating to you what I've learned. There's a lot of pain behind this. There's a lot of misfires. And, and you won't get it, I'll always get it right the first time. I have been, I started social media coaching in the fall of 2018. That's how long I've been at it, refining my vision and my brand. And I'm just now really getting a hold of it, honestly. And, and I'm going to evolve even more as you grow as a writer, too. So you got to hold it lightly, I would think. But almost certainly will involve, evolve. Yeah. And I will tell you, I want to write some nonfiction. And when I do, my brand is going to evolve even more. Yeah. Do you okay. put a logo? Renee wants to know, do you put some sort of logo on your images or your posts or your pins or something? Or is it only in the description? I do not. Mm -hmm. I could. Uh, yeah. Once upon a time, I made a little, if you look down through my Instagram post uh, feed, and you're welcome to do that. And if you do, you know, like some of my posts. But <laughs> uh, I put a little dragon I made up a little dragon and put it because everybody remembers, you know, Dragomir and dragon, but, but it just, in my opinion, artistically, it detracted, you know, if there was a logo on this picture that you're seeing right now, it wouldn't be as great. Now I did on this uh, history one, I put a, a hashtag there 16th century. Okay. And, um, I, I'm going to talk about hashtags in a minute, but if there's a hashtag you wanted to highlight, I think that would be a great place to do it. Now, what I thought, I'm going to go back to where I was or else I'll get lost. All right, here's what I want to do. I want to stop sharing for, for, for just a moment and just chat with you uh, a little bit about, uh, now we've defined, you know, I've defined for you what I do on these platforms, but here's the great news about images. Once you understand image sizes, you can duplicate content on different platforms. This is a huge time saver. So I want to tell you who the natural partners are. Now, first of all, the best, in my opinion, and you, you guys, if you have anything to say, pipe, pipe up, pipe in, whatever that metaphor is. Okay, chime in. Um, <laughs> uh, natural partners to me. When I have a square image that goes up on Instagram, I can also use that on Facebook and I can use that on Pinterest. And I've tried this out and I will tell you, one post, one concept, one idea, one image will post to three platforms. Do you feel yourself saving time? That is a big 
time saver. So what I do is I create, I told you the first thing I do, I'm gonna talk about my system in a minute, but, but I know that what I post on Instagram can be reposted or posted at the same time to Facebook and to Pinterest. Now, an, another uh, thing, the IG stories image is, remember, nine by 16, so it's, it's tall and long and, and not as wide. That can also be used for a Pinterest post. And some people really like that long because then you guess, do you know why? Can any of you tell me why? Tell me, Bethany. It takes that more screen room on your scroll as you're going through. These are visual mediums. <clears throat> people are looking at them. Eventually they're gonna read them, you hope but they're looking. If you post that, that Instagram story image onto Pinterest, when people are scrolling, your post goes, woo, instead of black. It's woo, okay? And there, you have to understand, uh -huh. and you, don't, you can understand the way you scroll. This is the way most people scroll. And just pay attention when you're scrolling through on some of these uh, social media platforms, what catches your eye? And on Pinterest, that Instagram story um, post will really catch your interest. So um, Twitter images, you know, I showed you the Twitter image now, instead of being long, it's wide, okay? Portrait, uh, orientation, landscape, okay? Most of us are familiar with that. The landscape image there on Twitter can also be used as a Facebook image. Now, when people are scrolling, what's the downside in Facebook? It does not take as much image. Say they're all square. Yeah, okay. The, and, and if you post your Twitter image onto Facebook, you can do that if you want to. But just realize it'll go by faster because the Instagram image that is square is twice as high. Okay, and we scroll vertically, folks. We don't scroll horizontally, we scroll vertically. So that vertical dynamic makes a big difference. Now, I'm going to share some information. Do not, do not be intimidated, all right? These are ideals. How many of you reach all of your ideals? If you raise your hand, smack yourself, because you don't, okay? We don't Never. reach all of our ideals, but I've done you know, I'm a person that if I'm going to have a goal, I need something to shoot at, right? Otherwise, you're swimming in the wide ocean and there's no landmarks. Who knows, right? So I've set myself some benchmarks that I'm going to try to reach. And I will tell you, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm in the, I'm in the middle of just a conflagration of activities trying to accomplish some of my writing goals. So I haven't given as much attention to my social media right now as I plan to and hope to. But here's the idea. Some people will ask for a question. How many posts a day? How many posts do I need to do a day? And it usually goes like this. How many posts do I need to do a day? <laughs> That's exactly right? what the question is. How much do I have? To oh, how many do I have to do? All right. I'm going to take a different attack. How many opportunities are you given to reach the wide, wide world right. today? Okay. And here's it is Facebook, one to two posts a day. How many of you think you can do one post a day on Facebook? That is not a All big deal. That is not a big deal. All of us should do one to two posts per day. When I tell you the number, doing more than that is not exactly better, okay? Because there can, believe it or not, be too many, okay? So one to two posts a day on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, listen, life, lifespan on Twitter is what? Half a second, man, Seconds. your tweet is there and it's gone and it's buried in the stream of all the other tweets, all right? The only one who gets more attention than that is celebrities, all right? But most of us, we're gonna get seconds for, and you say, why do it? Listen, there are times I'm like, why do Twitter? I don't know, but, and, and you may have different feelings, but 15. Now, not all of those need an image. And we're talking specifically about image. Do one or two tweets a day with an image and other, 
other tweets, just words, right? And I do Twitter on my phone. I use the dictate thing and I double check the spelling. Oh my goodness, I've embarrassed myself a couple times with that stupid word spell check thing. But um, retweets count, okay? So 15, a couple original, several retweets. You can do that in a few minutes, honestly. Find good content to retweet. I read somewhere there's a five, three, two rule. There's a four, one, one rule. Everybody has all these different rules, but I liked this one. I can curate or, po or retweet five posts, three posts I want to be original to me, my original thought or idea, and only two might be status updates. Okay, so there's five, three, and two. That's not 15, right? But it kind of gets me going in the idea that I don't have to get all original content. Some people think all their social media posts have to be original. No, they don't. Don't break your neck. Okay, don't waste your time doing that. Pinterest, the optimum, 11. One original pin a day. And we've already said we've got the image for it, right? Because we already made it for Facebook. One original pin, 10 repins. All right. If you're like me, my fingers move so fast on Pinterest, it ain't even funny. You ought to see some of my boards. You know, it's all these pins from other people. I like almost every pin I see. I don't know what it is about Pinterest. Uh, I, get in there, I get sucked in. You know, oh, that is the coolest thing. All right. But again, Pinterest, you know, I have some boards that are per personal and then I have boards that are more professional. I'm remodeling my kitchen, God willing, this fall. And, and so I'm, I'm devouring kitchen design uh, pins, but I'm also getting some of the ones on history and I'm going in and looking at hashtags, the hashtags that I use, I'm seeing what does other, what have other people posted? So one of my hashtags that I use is medieval history. I will pull up that hashtag and look and see what other people are posting. I comment on theirs you know, and try to get some traction inside that hashtag. And we're going to talk about hashtags more. So Pinterest and Optimum 11, one original pin, 10 repins. Instagram, one to two. Now I've done as many as four because I get eager, sorry. But um, one to two a day and an Instagram story, how often, Bethany? In a story? Yeah. Okay, so, well, definitely more than one because it's a story, and so it's, you're going to, I think you should do three to five, and then if you've got a longer story, you can go longer than that. Okay, I would say at least do one a day. Some of you have never done Instagram stories. <laughs> but like, if, don't you, do one. <laughs> if, you, if you do Instagram stories, you know, for me, my goal right now is one a day because that's new to me, all right, and part of it was I didn't want to go to all the extra trouble with creating the image. And I've just given you Cody Moorhead's brilliant idea that will give you an image to put up on Instagram stories and not take a lot of extra time. All right. Yeah. So I just haven't felt I had the time. I am going to start doing some video Instagram stories. Okay. But they're only there for 24 hours. This is why I say at least one a day. All right. And if you're Bethany, do more. Okay. Bethany. <laughs> Um, so if you're going to do like, if you're going to say, let's take a picture of your workspace for your Instagram story, let's say you're doing a really behind the scenes thing, you could actually make that one picture into three posts because you can, you can type in there as a, with the create model. So you could say, here's my workspace, post it, picture, workspace, and then ask a question on the third one. So your one picture has become three. That's kind of like what I was saying, but yeah. That is advanced imagery. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we need to have a writer's chat just on Instagram stories because that's pretty boring to me and I'm waiting in the chat. Some other people that say would be fun. Boring. Maybe I, will tell, I will tell you folks, there are always going to be people out ahead of you, right? Yeah. There are always going to be people trying to catch up to you. This is life. This is reality. Wherever you are in your journey, there are people ahead of you. Chase them for all your worth. I chase Bethany. I'm sorry. I stop <laughs> every day, Bethany. Oh! I, I really do. I really do. And I'll check out if I see your posts. 
you know, I'm wanting to see what it is you're doing because I know you have, you're so far ahead of me. And if people are not chasing someone ahead of you, you just kind of slow down, right? And then know that there are people who are admiring what you are, you are doing. I was shocked to, to get this invitation. And I'm like, somebody noticed you know, how hard I've been working. And so, you know, this is life. You know, chase some of those that are down the road from you. Now, I want to get, keep going here because I, I'm getting a little behind. I will say, use a scheduler. I and I'm not going to talk a lot about schedulers. Everybody wants to know what scheduler do you use? It's like, who's your hairdresser? You know, we're trying to say, to figure this all out. I use Buffer. And why do I use Buffer? That's what Victoria used as <laughs> Buffer. Okay? Yeah. And I'm a little ticked off with Buffer right now because they won't automatically post my IG story images. They want to send me some stupid reminder on my phone and it's all gotten complicated. So I don't know. I'm not going to illustrate a scheduler today, but what I am going to say is get a scheduler. And I have done a little research and for your convenience, I'm having Melissa put up in the chat some links to uh, recommended uh, and advantages and disadvantages of a lot of schedulers. My son-in-law does a lot of social media for his business. He loves Hootsuite, all right? Um, I think, Bethany, I don't know if you're still using Meet Edgar or Edgar. Mm -hmm. um, there's all kinds of there. So just use these links. Look at what makes sense to you. Don't be lured by people say free schedulers. I want to tell you, lots of schedulers offer their services, offer a free version. It'll do diddly squat. They, yeah. The whole <laughs> reason for offering you something free is to lure you into buying the paid version. Okay. So do your homework realize that a really good scheduler, there are no really good, absolutely free schedulers. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. But I see it as an investment in my time. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, you've heard me talk a little bit about content. And, you know, I, I'm going to just briefly go through this real quickly. But I recommend, because it was recommended to me, six streams, content six. Six Yay. things that identify your brand. Six words or six phrases that communicate your message and reach your audience. For nonfiction, that's pretty easy. The themes are chapters of your book. You know, you pull out themes from there. If you're writing fiction like I am, it's a little harder. And what I've been encouraged to do and have been doing, I've told you a little bit about this already, is picking out the themes of my book. So one of my themes is the orphan heart. Another theme for me is Scotland and the, the whole Scottish Gaelic culture. Another theme, I've already told you, medieval history. Another theme, castles. Some of my best posts are just reposting castle pictures and people are wild, okay? Um, historical fiction is one of, my, one of my content six. So both writing historical fiction and reading historical fiction, and I need to do more posts of historical fiction books that I've read because I'm a voracious reader. I can, girls, I can go through a book a day. I'm, I mean, I'm just really voracious yeah. if it's not too long, all right? I do that instead of watching television, an hour and a half, I'm through a book. So, uh, and then my last content six is biblical wisdom. I like to, to post scripture verses. They don't get a lot of traction, honestly. Uh, they just don't. I wish everybody loved the word mm -hmm. of God like I do, but it is part of my brand. Those could also be hashtags, couldn't they? Right. So let's talk about hashtags. I'm going to say, take the hash out of hashtag. So I'm going to share my screen again. And I'm going to show you what to do. Because somebody had to show me what to do. So I'm going to show you what to do. I made a Word document. And here she blows. These are Rhonda's hashtags. I've got them organized by my content. Okay. So here's content number one. Orphan heart. These are the hashtags I use. When I'm using my scheduler, this document is open. Highlight, copy, paste. And there we Amen. go. Now, most of these, uh, I haven't done this all on the first, but come down here. I hope you can see. I'm going to come in a little closer. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see. Um, what I have done here, uh, like on my Gaelic Proverbs, this is a new... Uh, uh, push for me working up to a book launch for the book I 
contract I don't have yet, nor the agent that I have yet. But anyway, I'm preparing for my book launch, okay? And part of it is um, these Gaelic Proverbs. And I put them together in groups of 14 because the last thing you want to do is be counting. Okay, I get 30 tags on Instagram, 30 hashtags. How many of you, if you had a chance to win the lottery, to win a million dollars, and you got 30 chances, would only take two? I right? love that. I love that so much. That's my new favorite thing. <laughs> if you're going to win the lottery and a million dollars, and you've got 30 chances, you're taking all 30 chances, right? For free. You don't even have to buy them. For free. I'm taking all 30. And you don't want to know how many times I've entered the HGTV Dream Home Contest, right? Okay, so why would you leave any of those spaces blank if you have 30, right? So I put mine together. I've got two groups of 14 here for Gaelic Proverbs. Then I'll go in and pull in a couple that relate to the day that I'm scheduling that post. Here's my medieval history. There's 16 tags. I have some subcategories like church history, like uh, knights and armament. Here's my castles hashtags, and they are all there. It's just cut and paste. The last thing you want to be doing is sitting there, oh, help me, how many hashtags can I type with my thumbs, right? I don't know about you, I have big thumbs. They don't go very fast. So this is much faster, especially if I'm using a scheduler. So I also have down here, and I'm, I'm asked, asked Militia to put this um, website in. These are daily hashtags and how they're used. So if I'm posting on a Monday, here's all these hashtags. Now some of them, Perfect. you know, if I'm doing a serious like Monday moods, it might not be so appropriate Monday, Monday, right? Okay, so what you have to do is understand these hashtags and what they're used for. You have to look through what kind of posts are there. If everybody's doing one of the Sunday hashtags is um, Sunday best and it's all people clothing, okay? And if I put something up there that is not my outfit, I don't get the hashtag, right? Yeah. Right. So don't, don't, it, it, it's like, well, how can I say this? It's like flashing people. You would not do that in public, <laughs> right? You would, you would try to fit in to the vibe because you're wanting to attract followers, not have them think you're a weirdo. Right. It's almost like interrupting, don't you think, Rhonda? Like if, yes. if people are following a hashtag for a specific reason and then you throw a random one in there because you're trying to ride the trend, it doesn't make you appealing. It makes you annoying. So, <laughs> so if here's the hashtag Sunday football and you put up a post and it's, yay, thus saith the Lord. I mean, people are going to be like, that's a fool. That's, you know, that I'm, I'm not having anything to do. That person is weird. All right, so you have to understand your hashtags. But what I'm talking about today, particularly, is developing your posts in your image stream. Have a list that you have made of hashtags that you understand. I guarantee you, I have looked on Instagram at every single one of these hashtags. Did it take a while? Yes. But I understand them, and that's part of the strategy, is knowing which hashtags are gonna work with my post. So if I have a fun post, it might have these, uh, hashtags. If it's a, a like it's got ar architecture or it's a travel destination, it's going to have different hashtags, right? So what I do is I've got these here and I use them as needed. Now, here's what I want to tell to you. Tell you 30 hashtags on Instagram. Facebook, if you do that, uh-uh, that is no good. Facebook, too many hashtags will lower your engagement. And that, there have been People smarter than me who figured that out, right? So two or three max hashtags on Facebook is the best advice that I read. Twitter, you only get 120 characters. So you're not gonna have 30 hashtags, right? Cause you want some content and then fill up with your best hashtags uh, on Twitter. And again, follow, understand the hashtags and how they go on Twitter. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my, my method, all right? And okay. yeah. Uh, before you progress on that, I actually did not get the um, link for the hashtags. Could you show that again? Oh. Um, <clears throat> it's on my document, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the day it of the week. Document. 
it's, it's at Espresso, which is done by, uh, this is a post from Hootsuite. Okay. And I'll try to get it here and see if I can put it in the chat. The Twitter character count is a little bit higher now, though. Um, Who is it? 280, yeah. Okay. But so still, same concept. I've copied that. When I get back out of my screen share, I'll try to put that in the chat. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, thank and you. Does, can you use hashtags with Pinterest? Did I miss that? Um, you can, but I, you know, since I duplicate my posts from back, back and forth, I don't use all 30 on my Pinterest posts. I usually do about half. And I haven't done as much research. I'm not as active on Pinterest as I am on some of the other mediums. Okay. Okay. So what is the methodology? I said, manage your image stream. Okay. And here we go. First thing I do is I create my IG story image. This can also go on Facebook. Keep in mind the rule of three. Okay. You see the rule of three in this post, right? In this image. And then I will tell you, I played around some more on book brush and what I could not do a month ago, I can do now. And that is when you're getting in there and you're working on this, on the IG story image at the very top of their interface. I wish I had time to show you. It says add size. You can change to a different size. So I start IG story, create, change to a different size and it's still got all my content, which I can move around and arrange, download this first, move it all around, rearrange it, Download the, the square image, right? And then I go down to the Twitter image. Okay, so, so here's my IG story image, my IG feed image, which also goes on Facebook, and if I want, on Pinterest. And then the last one is my Twitter image. Okay, so I have three appropriately sized images by the time I lock out of book brush or whatever image, you know, there's lots of image creation software folks. I'm a fan of book brush because it's easy and it gives me the tools I want, right? You might not be able to afford that. They do have some free plans, but I tell you, I am hooked on it. I can't, I can't in good conscience recommend anything else mm -hmm. because it will take you so much more time and folks in the writing business, time is money. Now I write full time at, at this season of my life. But I know a lot of you don't. You don't have full time to devote to writing. So your time is really valuable. And there are certain things, if you're serious about your writing career, that you should invest in. And one of them I say is a good scheduler. And one of them is, is a good image creation program. All right. And, you know, I use, I told you, I use Photoshop, which is the industry standard. Book brush is so much easier and faster for me than Photoshop. And I've used pho Photoshop for almost 20 years. All right. So that's my little commercial. So let me talk to you a minute about Instagram streams. Um, Instagram is the big fish when you're talking about images. Instagram is the image king. Okay. It's at the top of the heap. Now here's, I've done some screenshots. This is my this was my Instagram feed. Can you see this little guy in a kilt? Man, he was so cute. I got uh, hundreds of likes on this little guy. In fact, that may be my, my best post. But, but see, it's just like a stream of images. There is a thought in Instagram, a strategy I want to just share with you real quick, and then we're going to take some questions, about um, curating this stream to make it more interesting. Because when people want to like you, they will often go and they will see at least the first nine pictures in your stream if they want to scroll through. So they're testing you out. It's like a, like dating instead of marriage. You know, before I click, I, I'm going to see what, what are you like? Well, what would you think if you saw this image stream on somebody's? I actually I like these because I read them all, all the way down. I think that is really cool. Bethany loves it because guess what? It's pink. pink okay. There's words. Pink and black. These are actually Bethany's branded uh, colors. If you look at her Instagram thing, but that's called a checkerboard. And I saw this and I thought oh, that looks so cool. You, all you have to do is alternate posts. One light one, one black one, one pink one, one black one. So this is my Instagram feed. When I started doing this, I will tell you these little images, 
I created on my Bible app. There's, it will let me do images on my Bible app. And I've seen these all over the internet. You can choose your background. You can choose your verse. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I use the same background you see here. I had this going for a little while. Then I changed a different background. And here's a castle. And here's Raiders of the Lost Ark with toilet paper because humor is one of my things. You know, here's my cat looking out the backyard. Okay, here's Dale and I, you know, here's a castle. So the colored, full color images are alternated with the lighter images. That's all you have to do. And you've got this cool looking Instagram feed. Now this is called, this is called the giant square. And what they did is they uploaded nine images, one after another, and all those nine together make one big picture. Now that might look a little too complicated for you. I have not tried that yet, but isn't that eye catching? And the whole thing is about catching people's eyes. This is called ombre. In other words, we are going down through the tones of an image from yellow on down through orange to brown, right? So ombre is like if you had light blue and the, the blue got more intense as it went down. Some people do this for a while on their Instagram feed. This one is just branded colors. I mean, it's gray and beige and white. And you're thinking, how boring is that? But look how beautiful that is. Beautiful. Really, it's beautiful. And it just, it catches your eye because you're like, this is a person who knows who they are. And when people get onto your Instagram feed, they should be able to, to know who you are. And if they can't get to figure out who you are, it's just confusing. So, and then here's another one. This is uh, using one filter. They just took all their images and put a pale pink filter on top of it. And that is very easy to do in book brush, right? So all of their images have this pink tone, or it could be blue, or it could be green. It could be one of your branded colors, okay? Now, I'm going to stop my screen sharing. This is a whole lot of information, and I am sure that there are people who have questions, and we have only a few minutes left. So does anyone have a question, or were there questions in the chat? No, so come on back in, you guys, and you can ask questions. It's inspirational. I know that. I know we've picked up some of the questions. We've answered them as they go through. It seemed like I had one. Um, okay. Let's see if anybody's got some questions here. Did we miss anybody? Some of you guys may have put questions. Rhonda just posted that link again, which I think Brandy did. Brandy said something earlier. Brandy, I'm picking on you. I heard, I see Brandy's oh. comment, ouch, that one I don't like. Uh, you know? No, earlier she called your sheet where you kept your hashtags, a hashtag style sheet. And I love okay. that phrase. I thought that was okay. great. That is a good way. Sometimes I have names for what I do. Sometimes I just do it. But I will tell you, I'll remind you what we said in our last um, session. Images and the way you respond to images is very personal. And what you love, someone else might hate. All right. So the, I would say go with what you love because with what you love says something about you. And you want your feed to reflect you. So don't go copy somebody else's style. Don't go say, it. well, Bethany's black and pink. I think I'll be black and pink. Okay. No, come up with something that fits you and fits your brand. And if you don't understand branding, that's the first time you've heard this word, go back into the writer's chat video archives. There are lots of lessons that I have enjoyed about branding. I've learned something in almost every one of them. Mm -hmm. And it's important that my images reflect my brand, not just in content, written content, but look. Mm -hmm. Leslie wanted to know you right at the beginning. I think it's when you talked about natural partners. Yes. About what goes square, what goes long, what goes wide. Can you kind of repeat that one more time? That was right at the beginning. And yes. some people didn't catch yes. that. Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest can all use a square image. So if you create a square image, like an Instagram post image, like feed image, it's uh, 1080 by 1080 is the pixels. You can use that on Facebook and on Pinterest. You can use the IG story image, which is the long skinny one on Instagram stories. You can also use it more, even more effectively as a Pinterest pin. Okay, now Book Brush has Pinterest uh, sizes there, but, what, but I don't waste my time 
making new images when I, when I've already made will work. And then Twitter images can also go on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're not as effective. Facebook is much more effective with a square image. Which I'm curious, which Bible app did you use that you do images with? It is on my phone, Jean. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a little icon. It says Holy Bible uh, U version. Bible U? Mm -hmm. U version. Mm -hmm. And it has a verse of the day. It has a it has a verse image of the day. And I've seen those all over the internet. But you can also choose any verse and make it into an image. It has filters. You can change the font. You can change the colors. It has a lot of functionality inside that little app. And I really like it. I'll, I'll put that in the, it's the U version. Okay. In I've seen app. that, but I didn't know which one you were using. That is super. And Brandy said you could use your own photo with it. No, I'm not, I've not found that functionality, but I, I guarantee there are so many, so many resources that you can come across and, you know, find out what other people do and do that research. You, people say, Rhonda, how are you so smart? I'm not so smart. I just have fingers. I have 10 fingers <laughs> and I go like this on my keyboard and up comes all this wonderful information, right? Yeah. So, uh, just, just use your search engine and read up it's invest a little time. And the last thing I wanted to say before, before we're done recording, you know, this is a time commitment. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things I appreciate about, about a uh, serious writer, they will tell you to your face, divide your writing time 50, 50 between mm -hmm. writing and platform 50, 50 folks. The first time I heard Kyle say it, he, he said 60, 40, but he has since amended that recommendation 50 50 so if you have an hour to write now you might write an hour one night and the next night you have an hour in that social media that's fine you don't have to divide it up in one day because if you're like me when i get going on my writing i can't do anything else i can't yeah. stop riding that horse until it crosses the finish line for that day all right but somewhere along then the next night instead of getting back into my writing i will do social media for the entire time that I have. So I just encourage you, this is worthwhile. And I will, I will share on a very personal level. Right now, I am trying to find an agent. And I've won contests. And I told you in, the, in our contest savvy lecture, that does not guarantee you're going anywhere. It just means you have a certificate to hang on the wall because you gotta do the rest of the hard work, right? And the rest of the hard work, I really think one of the struggles I'm having is my platform isn't big enough. Mm -hmm. my, my platform is just not big enough. Somebody's going to have to roll the dice and take a chance on me. Mm -hmm. And so here I am. I'm a little gem. I sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. But unless I can match up a great manuscript, which I honestly, I believe I do, I with a platform that will support it, before the publications board, right? I'm toast. So building my platform is advancing my career. Mm -hmm. I have to think of my career with two prongs, writing a great book and telling everybody about it, right? I've got to have both. So the time that I spend, I'm like, I wish I could be writing instead of doing all this stupid <laughs> social media stuff. I don't know if anybody else is like that. I can be like that and I love images and I know how to do images, but my book is calling me. Well, you know, my, my, my book can call all at once to, it's like a little two year old, you know, mommy, 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 you know, eventually if you're trying to get something done, you say just a minute mm -hmm. <laughs> or you put them in time out, you know, I have to put my book in time out and go and do social media because that's the needed thing for that day. You are inspirational girl. You are just really, well, I'm just real, Jean. I'm I just, I'm just real. I'm not going to pretty it up because sometimes practical. it's awful ugly. It's practical, but, you know. Stuff. Sometimes you just do it ugly. And if you don't know about bush, uh, book brush, several. Of, I think most of you might have been on for that one. That's in our archives. So you can go back to uh, both either Facebook page or YouTube channel and find that one. And we had a wonderful. 
session Kath on that. Kathleen's session on Book Brush was awesome on Writer's Chat. It really was. And also, if you sign up for their free version, you get access to tutorials. And their tutorials are fabulous. It's click by click. It and really it's very, very simple. I'm curious, Bethany, since you are our social media guru or diva there, do you want to make any comment about any of the stuff that she shared today while we're still in the recording? Well, I loved it and took notes for like a cheat sheet mm -hmm. and I think consistency. I think that's what I admire so much about Rhonda. She's, she really is thinking strategically about the content that she's putting out, especially around the book right now. And, you know, she can always switch or change later, but right now she's going all in on that content six. And I think that that's what the snowball effect, like, it might be slow right now, but like you said, you're getting people who are not in your target audience following you. That's still a following, you know, like who knows where this could branch out and you're just being very, I just have a lot of respect for how you're handling your marketing efforts right now. You're doing a great job. Well, I'm not a born marketer and most of us are not born marketers, mm -hmm. right? But I have mm -hmm. to learn how to market and crank up my courage to put it out there, even if it's not perfect. And any of you going to raise your hand that you're a perfectionist? I'm going to raise both hands. I am. And, and, and sometimes I think, oh, that was, that was ugly. I'm going to go back to what I said. Do it ugly. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. Right? Just do it. And don't think, well, if it's not as good as Rhonda's, then I can't do it. No, 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 no. You be the best you. And the mm -hmm. best you will get better at yeah. it. You right? keep learning. Like you said, we just keep learning. We just That's keep right. learning. This has been great. I know several people have to go, so I, I want to wrap up the recording, but just while we're quick recording, next week is it my topic, Melissa, I think it is. Next yes. week, we're going to talk about uh, a feeding, uh, feeding the writers, not filling, filling the writers well, about we all sometimes get down a little bit discouraged, and I think this year, especially with 2020. So we're going to talk about things that give us life, so think about that. We're going to have several people share. We're going to talk a little bit about how to feel a writer's well. But think about that this week. What gives you life? What gets you motivated? And I know one thing is this community for me. But anyway, mm -hmm. think about that. Uh, each, and then you might want to share some. Because it, we'll, we'll do a little bit of talking and some sharing with a small group. And then we'll invite everybody back on early. So it'll be kind of an open mic sharing because we might help each other through this and we haven't done that for a while so we thought that would be good on that way so thank you again Rhonda for being with us well done well, thank you I loved I love to teach and I love writers chat well we can be back anytime you keep feeding us topics we'll, we'll get you on that so we'll be in the writers well next week and uh, ho hopefully drink some living water and some refreshing water and mm. that way and thank you for joining us and if you took time to watch the replay a couple of us have already said we're going to re-watch this replay yeah. we just really appreciate that and those of you that are here you're welcome to stay on for a few minutes afterwards and we can uh, do some sharing off camera but thank you for everybody for being with us today bethany thank you for jumping on melissa thank you for re recording and again Rhonda, thank you thank you thank you it was great see you guys next week bye now <laughs>